They have confirmed Red Yami will be a launch banner, which is kind of interesting. I, you know, I've been talking about the fact that I thought he might not be, but then there's also the flip side that I'm like, okay, well, he is Yami, so it would make sense why he would still be a raid up banner. And well, yeah, so they confirmed it that uh, get ready for a special raid up banner to add him to your squad. And obviously, it's starting November 30th on launch. So now I have to pull it up. I have to pull it up. It's important. Where is it? 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 We're 11 days from global launch, which is insane, bro. Insane. And of course, one guaranteed SSR Yami every 200 draws, which is, I mean, just one of the best pities in gotcha because of how many pulls we get from this game now what's funny is that this person said every 200 draws are you kidding and he got jumped bro look at this look at this man he got jumped especially because you look at other games like dokkan what 50 multi pity well no it's a thousand a 20 multi pity so same as same as black clover mobile for like actual pity counting the yellow coin um then legends is what 40 pity i think 440 multis Grand Cross is 30. Genshin, though, is 9, which is probably why I was saying he's probably a Hoyoverse player. But anyway, uh, yeah, Red Yami's coming. And that's pretty cool. I mean, they've been pushing out some other videos saying that, I mean, Yami's going to be coming. D11, so it seems like they're going to be doing a countdown. And I mean, yeah, so they also showed a skilled on the French version. Um, it's, it's all the same stuff. So, you know, no changes from what I've been seeing. Of course, I can read French, which is honestly, it's been more helpful than I thought it would be, especially when uh, Kaku was giving a lot of information about the game because he's French, right? So yeah, now because it's day 11, we still got a lot of stuff to go through. I'm guess or a lot of days. I'm guessing that we might get more stuff, like more banners on launch, maybe. Because of the fact there's still 11 days, so I, they're going to show the three seasonals probably on different days. But that's three days, right? Another eight days, I don't know what they're going to be showing. Maybe it's really just going to be Red Yami and them on launch. But if there's Lich and Raya on launch too, at the very least, that would be crazy. I could see them like... I really... I, I have a couple different ideas in my head that I could see them doing. I'm going to talk... Oh, Dan, what, why is this trending? Thighs, bro? Like 20,000 posts? Anyway... I'm going to talk about Red Yami in a little bit, but I have a couple theories now, especially because we are guaranteed like to get Red Yami. They might do one dual banner a week because of the fact that we know Kiara and Kohono will be a dual pickup banner. And it does seem that they're updating everything through the JP client. So um, this was found in the JP version, but it's obviously going to be for global, correct? Right. So my guess now might be Yami week one, Licht and Raya week, uh, sorry, Yami day one. List and Raya a week later, Fauna Vero a week later, and then Kyaro Kohono a week later. Or week like after a week, we get all four Midnight Squad and then the sibling duo, or we just don't get the sibling duo at all. Because it's still possible we get chapter five and we don't get Kyaro Kohono, which would be a bit weird, but it could be possible. So that's definitely something. There's a lot of different ways they could go about this, and I think they need to nail it perfectly. People might be mad if they add a Kyaro and Kohono banner because it might be too much saturation of banners for them, which I must agree. I could see that. I could definitely see that because we're going to get Ready Ami, List Raya in one banner, right? Fauna Veto in another banner, and then Kyaro Kohono. That's five banners, including the season banner, but in total, that's three on season. Ready Ami is four. And then another four, so that's eight, ten units, technically, right? I, I didn't miscount, right? Because we got um, we got season one, Asta, season one, Yami. Okay, wait, so I'll put Asta, Yami, Mimosa, Yami again, Lich, Raya, Fana, Veto, uh, Kiaro, Kahono. That's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten units yeah so that might be a bit oversaturated if they do put kiaro and kohono in season one but i could still see it happening especially because it's on dual banners now um but we'll have to see how they go about it either that or they make season one shorter which could be the case but i just feel that they have to include them to catch up to canada because they have to catch up to canada that's like my main like go-to reason for saying that they should be in season one or they just shorten season one and it just equals out to the same stuff but we're gonna have to see but I, obviously midnight sun is coming that's like guaranteed especially because they were there on canada season one it just makes sense but looking at canada of course kyaro kohono came out in season two so maybe they're gonna follow that but just quicker obviously quicker because these seasons will be one month of course you play you people who've only played played on canada won't know what that's like yet 
and it's gonna stay that way. Um, let me let me try to find what it is. Look, give me a sec. So Canada season two ends December seventh, which is a week after global launches. And this would mean season three if it's another two months, right? I'm guessing that's how it's gonna look like to me. Um, that would mean so two more months for global to catch up, huh? I I feel it really. Could that make sense? Because if anything, by season four, or yeah, season three, and they're caught up technically. But season three of global, like they're going to get season four at the same time as my current guess. But anyway, it's not really that important, but it's just, I don't know. The, the scheduling is just a bit odd considering now we're having Yami. But like if I, if it was me, obviously I would have done Midnight Sun on launch. But maybe, maybe there's still 11 days, so we might get it. But obviously Yami's here makes sense. He is Yami. It really could have went either way. So I understand that. Now, should you be summoning for Yami? Personally, if you get Red Asta, I don't think you like need to. But obviously, he's a very fun unit, especially slash only if you get Blue William for PvP. You really do need Blue William and like higher PvP to really use this Red Yami in the first couple of weeks. But he does fall off quite quick. But he can be a very good counter to Lich and Raya teams if you have William, right? Because this guy's just going to counter, 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 counter. Um, and because it's an AoE counter and he's red, it's going to be very strong against the Lich and Raya, which are both green. Now, this is honestly just pretty good because he gets like crits a lot. And overall, 22.03. I'm pretty sure that's with dupes though, huh? Yeah, okay. So that's not a fair comparison, but he has pretty good crit rate. Um, but like the reason why you build him with crit is because you get crit damage here. And then also um, increase crit damage for each instance of DOT if he has his skill page. And also because he gets increased crit rate on his ultimate. So like little things like this give it that. And also because he wants to get the crit. And also because um, Lich and Raya, you will want to crit them. So I'd say building him with crit and accuracy are the two main things you're going to want for him. I have a build for him. I didn't really include accuracy because I feel like accuracy is just a bit cringe. But it's whatever, right? Now, Yami, like, his skill 2 also is good. He's good for bosses, but he's not the best, right? Raya is the best for bosses. But you need another person for bosses, and I'm going to guess you're going to go for Season 1 Asta. So, you know, Red Yami is definitely not needed. I'd say for free-to-plays, go for Red Asta, because then also for PvE, I think Red Asta would be fine. Uh, because of the fact that Charlotte is just going to be his best partner. Because, like, look, you, you put the mark on, you get, you get this skill to level 4. You put the defense, you put the mark, Asta's gonna kill one, he's gonna get two extra turns from that, then he's gonna kill everyone else, basically. Because Asta himself gives himself an extra turn, and then if he kills one of them, that's an extra turn, so an extra, 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 extra turn, right? So you don't need Red Yami for any of the content, but if you want to go for him because he's Yami, go ahead. He's not a bad unit, but that basically makes the video, there's not much more to say. Um, we'll talk about it more when we get to launch, which banners you should summon on. But it's going to be the season matter. I really, at this point in the game, because we get Charlotte for free, I don't think you should go for uh, Red Yami. Like, Red Yami was great on JP because we didn't have Charlotte, right? So Charlotte didn't allow single target DPSs to shine. But because she gives extra turns when you kill someone with the mark debuff, it just makes Red Asta so much better for farming. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's basically it. Red Yami's so cool. I love Red Yami. I've gotten, like, um, let me pull up my YouTube. I've gotten him, ma not max, but I've gotten him, and I've made, like, pretty fun videos on both JP and Canada. I was a big Red Yami rep, and I think he's probably better than Blue Yami overall now. But where is it? Canada version, let's look. So, like, I think, I, yeah, I should have put it. But I made this video. I'm like, bro, 2.5k views? Like, th this is enough for me to really, really like him. But just in general, I like Red Yami. He was my first DPS um, with Red Asta because, you know, Red Asta, you know, he's still Red Asta. So I wanted to try both of them out. But this video, what, who did I say? I don't know who I said. I, I really don't know who I said. But like right now, I'm probably going to lean more towards Red Yami in the long run. Also, because of the fact that he does help out in Hall of Illusions floor 80 for free to play people. Uh, or not free to play, but just people who don't like have much going for them. He's definitely the, the main way to beat him because you get the guaranteed stun. This guaranteed stun on the skill 2 is actually insane. Because if, if you're attacking someone with a bleed, guaranteed stun. Which brings me to say, him with uh, probably Red Austin when he comes out is going to be great. Because 
my guess, um, Witch Queen came out. Wh Witch Queen, oh, I'm so happy that it's all on Pride One. Witch Queen came out and it's a bleed unit. So three turn bleed is pretty crazy. But then Poison Bleed and Burn, my guess is that Red Asta is going to... Uh, red, Black Asta, because he should be black. Sorry, bro, I'm mixing up the colors. He should be red because of the fact that she has an all uh, red passive. And Witch Queen obviously controlled Black Asta. So to me, it would make sense if Asta would be red and would be off of bleed because of the fact that her alts bleed and she was, she's like a supporting Black Asta. So Red Yami is going to be able to get a bit more use, but at the same time, right, at the same time, bleeds don't stack. So Red Yami won't have any real need, but if you don't pull for Witch Queen, maybe Red Asta is going to be like one of those units where it's like, you must have a bleed stack for Asta to do like X amount of extra damage. So Red Yami having this AoE bleed is going to be very good, right, for Black Asta because of the fact I'm guessing which queen is being built around Red Asta, Red Black Asta. So yeah, that's my thoughts. You let me know what you think, but we are in need of a new, red, uh, new physical DPS because if we look at stats, the last good one, the last like really good one was Kyoto in Season 2. Jack was okay, right? But all of these, Red Asta was launched. Yami was launched, Raya was like close to launch. Like one, two, three, four, five, four, five of them were on launch, and we've gotten two excluding season one. Sorry, five season one, and then the rest in the last five seasons, we've gotten these two physical attackers. Not good. So, yeah, like look at all the magic attackers, bro. Or let me let me put exclusively attackers. These are all magic attackers. All of these. And then attackers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How many magic? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It's like five more is a big difference, especially when you consider that they were all post launch. There's one, two, three, four, four that were in season one. The rest we've gotten after. So we do need more attackers. Yeah, it's, I'm just kind of rambling at this point, but it's just to say that like Red Yami might be very good longevity wise just in general because black asta might be like needing the bleed dlts on everyone so we'll have to see how it plays out but yeah that's basically it i'll see you guys in the next one and uh peace